This is the last of section 3-4 on applications of determinants. Some of the things that are in this section are very useful. Others are just, it's fun we can do it, and so it's kind of cool to present it here in this section. I've got a triangle up here on the board. It's got three coordinates, x1, y1, x2, y2, and then in the middle up there, x3, y3. Can I find the area of this triangle? Now, it's not necessarily a right triangle, so I can't drop an altitude and do one-half base times height on that. It's not sitting on an axis. It doesn't have a point at the origin. It's just floating there, a generic triangle in space. One thing I notice is that I can actually start drawing things underneath it to find its area. So I can draw something like this. And I've got a trapezoid over there. And then I can draw another figure on the side over here. And I've got another trapezoid, right? These two are the parallel sides here. That one and this one are the parallel sides over there. And then that includes the triangle and the thing on the bottom. Well, the piece on the bottom, I don't want. So let's look at this trapezoid that's formed by going across, up, and over there. All right, so let's separate those three trapezoids. The blue trapezoid looks like this. What do I know about its dimensions? Down the bottom over here is the difference between x3 and x1. So x3 is the larger, x1 is the smaller, so I'll write it like that so that we get positive sides. The height of that trapezoid is this coordinate up here, is y3. The height on the other side is this coordinate here, it's y1. All right, let's take a look at the green trapezoid that's on the right side over there. So the green trapezoid comes up like this, ugh, and across like this. Well, it looks kind of like that. This side over here is adjacent to the blue one, so that's y3. On the right side, that height over there is y2. And then down the bottom over here, it's bigger minus smaller, so x sub 2 minus x sub 3. Now, if I add those two areas together, then I need to subtract off that big trapezoid that's underneath them that's not part of the area of the triangle. That's the one that I outlined with a black marker. So that trapezoid looks like this, shorter on this side taller on that side. What are the dimensions there? Well, the dimensions of that trapezoid are going to be y1 over here, y2 over there, and then on the bottom, x2 minus x1. Now, the way I've organized these trapezoids is probably the reverse of what you've seen in like high school geometry books, where the trapezoids always lay like this with the bases parallel top and bottom. The way I did it, and the parallel bases are actually on the side here. So this is base 2, that's base 1, and that's the height. Remember the formula for the area of a trapezoid is that the area of a trapezoid is 1 half the height times the sum of the bases. Or you could actually take the average of the bases and multiply them by the height. So let's take a look at our three trapezoids. Let's organize the work under here. For the blue trapezoid, blue trapezoid, we'll get 1 half the height which is x3 minus x1 times the sum of the bases, which is y1 plus y3. All right, for the green trapezoid, we'll get one half the height, which is x2 minus x3 times the sum of the bases, which is y sub 3 plus y sub 2. And then the black trapezoid, the one that's going to be subtracted from those two, is up in the corner over there. So it's going to be one half the height, which is x2 minus x1, times the sum of the bases, which is y1 plus y2. All right, this is going to get messy before it gets better. So the area of the trapezoid, or the area of the triangle, area of the triangle is going to be the area of the green trapezoid plus the area of the blue trapezoid minus the area of the black trapezoid. They have a half outside the whole thing. So maybe we can pull a one half out of this whole thing. Now, the green trapezoid is going to require that I foil these things out. So x2 times y3 plus x2 times y2 minus x3 times y3 
minus x3 times y2. Okay, that's the green trapezoid. Then I have to do the blue trapezoid. So let's add in the blue trapezoid. So let's add in x3, y1. So again, I'm just foiling, right? First outside, inside, last. So there's x3, y1, x3, y3. Oh, but there's already an x3, y3 here. So let's just add the x3, y3 in that spot. So then minus x1, y1. So minus x1, y1, and then minus x1, y3. And now for this third trapezoid piece over here, I need to foil this out too. So when I do that, I get x2, y1. But remember, everything here is subtracted. So it's minus x2, y1. It's minus x2, y2. I'm sorry, it's plus x2, y2. It's minus x1, y1, but now that becomes a plus. And it used to be minus x1, y2, but now it's plus x1, y2. So those things all get added to the end, a negative, a positive, a positive, and a negative. Do any of these match up? Yeah. This x1, y1 over here can go under this one, x1, y1. There's an x2, y2 over here. That should be a minus, right? Because x2 times y2, and then I'm going to change the sign to make it a minus. And so now it fits. So minus x2, y2. That takes care of that. And then I still need a minus x2, y1, and a plus x1, y2. Yeah. See? Look at that. Great. What did I come up with over here? A mess. Area of the triangle is going to be one half times x2, y3. These things go away, those things go away, minus x3, y2, plus x3, y1. Those two guys go away, minus x1, y3, minus x2, y1, plus x1, y2. And you say, why? Why do I come up with this gigantic formula? Well, here, let me just, I don't know, out of the blue, I'm going to introduce a matrix. A matrix that looks like this. I'm going to put x1, y1, and the number 1. I'm going to put x2, y2, and the number 1. I'm going to put x3, y3, and the number 1. You realize what happens if you go to find the determinant of that matrix? You end up with x1 times y2, 1, y3, 1. In other words, you end up with x1 times y2 minus y3. So x1, y2 is here, minus x1, y3 is here. Okay, then you'll get minus y1 times x2, 1, x3, 1. All right, what is that? That's minus y1 times x2 minus x3. So minus x2, y1, okay? And then plus x3, y1, all right? Do it for the third one and you'll get the same thing. You'll get x2, y3, which is over here, and you'll get x3, y2 subtracted, which is over there. So what I'm saying is that you'll end up with the determinant of the matrix that's formed by putting the points for the triangle and then adding a column of ones at the end. Now, the only issue happens if x3 is not between x1 and x2. So if somehow, in other words, you put the points in the wrong order, how do you know what goes where? Or if you switch these two around, in other words, you put the x3 one in the x2 spot and the x2 in the x3 spot, you may end up with a negative determinant, right? So if x3 is not between x1 and x2, then you're going to end up with a negative determinant. And so we write the formula this way. We say for a triangle, with these vertices, x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, the area 
is plus minus one half the determinant of the matrix formed that's basically the same thing I just put up there in green. X1, Y1, 1, X2, Y2, 1, X3, Y3, 1. All right. And that plus minus just means that you always choose the positive one. It doesn't mean that the area can be negative, the area can't be negative, so you're going to choose whatever makes that positive. All right, let's try one. So suppose I've got a triangle. With these vertices, I've got 1, 3, I've got 7, 5, I've got 4, 8. What's the area? Well, all my determinant goes 1, 3, 1, right? x1, y1, z1. Now, the 7 has to be on the far right, so that's the 2, and the 4 goes in between them. But you realize that if I had not put the points in the order and you weren't careful about them, you might have put the 4, 8, 1 as the second row and the 7, 5, 1 as the last row. And you realize that switching the order of rows changes the sign of the determinant. All right, let's see what this gives me. This gives me 1 half times 1 and then block out row 1, column 1. I get 5 minus 8 plus 3 times 7 minus 4 except that should be a minus, and then plus 1 times 56 minus 20. All right, so 5 minus 8 is 3. 7 minus 4 is 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, and that'll give me a 36. So that gives me a negative 3. Negative 3 minus 9 plus 36. So I end up with a negative 12 plus 36, so 1 half of 24 which is 12, that's the area of my triangle. Is there a way to verify this? Sure there is. If you have ever studied something called a hero's formula, sometimes it's called Heron's formula, it's a way to find the area of a triangle using what they call the semi-perimeter. So if you ever want to verify it, you actually can by finding the semi-perimeter of this triangle, and then it's the semi-perimeter times the semi-perimeter minus the length of each side. So there is some work that goes into finding the length of each side. But you could use Heron's formula or Hero's formula to find an approximation for the area of the triangle. But this will give you an exact value because it doesn't depend on us giving estimates for side lengths. All right, what happens then if the determinant is zero? If the determinant is zero then that must mean that the area of the triangle is zero. Well, what does it look like if the area of the triangle is zero? It means that one segment looks like this, and the other two segments are sitting up on the top over here. So like one segment of length this, one segment of length that, and the two segments add up to the third one. So if the area of the triangle is zero, that means that the points are actually collinear. They lie in the same line. So I can use that then to find out information about points. So suppose I want to find the equation of the line through these two points, through the point 2, 3, and 6, 1. Now, in Algebra 1 in high school, you probably found the slope between those two points, put it into point-slope form, solving it like y equals mx plus b. And you were done. But that's not nearly as fun as this method of doing it. This time we're going to set it up as a determinant with x, y, and 1. My next point will be 2, 3, and 1. The next point will be 6, 1, and 1. And this time I want the determinant to be 0. I need to find some relationship between x, y's, and constants. So let's find the determinant of that matrix. Knock out row 1, column 1, and I'm left with 3, 1, 1, 1, minus y. Knock out row 1, column 2, and I get 2, 1, 6, 1, plus 1, times 2, 3, 6, 1. And all of that is equal to 0. All right, so I'll get x 
times 3 minus 1 minus y times 2 minus 6 plus 1 times 2 minus 18 is equal to 0. Well, this gives me a 2x minus a minus gives me plus 4y equals negative 16. Divide through by 2, and you get x plus 2y. Oh, hold on a second. That, that should be on the other side. And so if I add a 16 to both sides, then I get 16 divided by 2 gives me 8. And that's how I find the equation of that line. Right. Certainly not the way that you would teach somebody in Algebra 1, but it's kind of a fun thing that you can do that. What do we do? We set up the determinant of the matrix, found the determinant, and this time we set the determinant equal to 0. At the end, I threw that 16 over on the other side, divided it through by 2, and I have my answer. You can actually find volume of a tetrahedron in a very similar way. Your textbook has a whole run-through of it. I'm not going to do it here. But you can find volumes of tetrahedrons, areas of triangles, and other things using that same formula.